about who you portray, and how would you describe Leonard? I just told you Leonard Seppala. Um, Leonard Seppala is he—he he was a real-life character. This is based on a true story. He was a, a, a Norwegian man that immigrated to Alaska. He came there to find his fortune. Um, that didn't really work out. So then he started running a, a dog, dog sled. He learned how to drive dog team and uh, did a postal route. So that's really how he started. And then he would competitively race because he was an athlete and he was known as a good dog sled guy. So at one point, uh, there's a diphtheria outbreak in Nome and an antitoxin, which is very far away, um, has to be retrieved in order to uh, cure the, the sick people in Nome. And there's no way to get to it except for by dog sled because open uh, air cockpit won't work, the train doesn't go, uh, it can't reach them. So he makes this heroic um, trip to get the antitoxin and bring it to Nome. He ended up doing 260 miles of a 600 uh, mile loop. Uh, he was eventually relieved by a relay of like 20 dog teams that on the average did 31 miles. He did 260 in the middle of a huge um, storm. So uh, he was a man that was very uh, tenacious, uh, sort of laconic, um, but he has this relationship with his, uh, with his wife a very um, strong-willed and smart uh, Belgian woman and, uh, and beautiful. Uh, yeah, I, don't get me started. <laughs> and uh, she, he learns a lot from her. And uh, she's very central to the story in the respect that um, he could be a closed, rigid person probably all his life and may not even be able to open his heart to this, to this dog that becomes a uh, really essential part of his life. But through her, through her belief, through her wisdom about this dog, uh, about reading that dog, uh, he comes to a, a new understanding. Perfect. And what attracted you to the role? Um, you never know what a role is until you get there, but you can look at a script and you say, do I want to do these things? Is this, is this interesting to me? Do I have to learn something? Do I have to discover something? Will I have a chance to discover something? That's what I see. Um, the scenes were well written. Uh, the adventure aspect, the fact that I was going to be mushing, you know, uh, driving these dog teams in this, in this very, um, beautiful landscape under really tough conditions. That seemed like a challenge, and uh, that's sort of the centerpiece of the action of the story. So there were many pleasures. And Julianne, who do you portray, and what role does she play in making um, of this hero dog? I play Constance Seppala, wife of Leonard, and she's the one that uh, Togo is a runt, is the runt of the litter, and normally this is the dog that they would try to get rid of or is, is more trouble than it's worth. And she encourages her husband to keep this dog and give him a chance, and, um, and eventually he does. But I love that we can see this, this strong, independent woman within this relationship and this equal partnership. And, you know, they, they live by themselves, miles from anywhere in this pretty hard landscape. They, they, it's up to them to keep this place running. And I love that she's not just in the kitchen, but she's on the roof, helping mend the roof, and she's chopping wood, and she's helping care for the dogs. And there's a real um, closeness that these two have, that, and real trust and love that I, was really fun to play and really exciting to see on screen. What attracted you to this incredible story? Um, I thought the script was really, well, this, this relationship was for me, because that's what I would be you know, actively doing, um, was the big draw for me. And to be, be able to do that with Willem, who was already cast, was very appealing to me. 
Um, and I spoke to Erickson Kaur, our director, who has who started off as a as a cinematographer. So he had a very clear idea and and this you know extensive lookbook of of images that inspired him. And it was very beautiful. And um, his relationship, he had a wolf for like twelve years or something. So he has very deep connections with with the canine world and um, and nature. He he's a, a nature guide and has done tons of um, directing in these this type of landscape. We were in the Canadian Rockies, which is one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. Just breathtaking. So there were a lot of a lot of reasons to say yes. So well, when it went into preparing your role on this film, you talk about um, being a musher and working with the dogs. How many days of training? How did that it's hard to say uh, how long I trained because I was training for the whole movie. Yeah, it was ongoing. It was ongoing. Um, but initially, it's they take me slowly. I arrive, uh, and I started just being around the dogs, uh, watching the people that, uh, ha the professionals that have the dog teams, just watching them, and then slowly, like an apprenticeship, I started doing the things that they were doing, and then eventually I started, uh, you know, being behind the sled. Uh, so it was it was slow, but I trained all through. I had to, because um, although it seems like a very simple action, it takes a lot of finessing, and you do have to have a deep understanding of, of the dogs, uh, understand how they're doing, uh, what kind of mood they're in. Uh, it's, it's, it becomes, once you get past the basic actions, you realize that uh, you know, you could, uh, it takes a lifetime to be a good musher. About where Togo takes place and explain the rural remote realities of where Constance and Leonard made their home. The the story we're telling takes place in Nome, Alaska, in both 1913 and 1925. It's one of the things I love about this movie, actually, is how they jump back and forth between time periods. Um, how we're introduced we're introduced to Togo as a as a mature dog, and then and then we then we're told his story from when when they first meet him. Um, and you know it's <laughs> it's Alaska in 1925, so there's not a lot of uh, comforts around, and their home in particular is miles from anywhere, and um, obviously no electricity, no running water. So it's very much about the day-to-day, -day, the running of of a home and a property and the dogs, and and yeah, trying to stay alive in that world. How did the cold temperatures help your performance? And how did the weather and its unpredictability impact your impression of the reality of Cephala's journey? Well, nature, in this case, being shooting so much outdoors, um, you know, tells you what you can and can't do. And uh, you're always in contact with it. It's a fluid thing, and that makes you fluid in your approach to what you're doing. There's no there's no arriving. You always got to stay on top of it because the target is always moving. The, the weather is always changing. Um, so I guess, you know, it, when it's cold, uh, there's no acting required. You're cold. <laughs> you're cold. Um, and of course, it's, it's, you're creating a parallel experience that is not as dangerous, is not as difficult as his his uh, as the true life story, but it gives you a little glimpse. It gives you a foothold. Gives you you're paying a little bit for the authority to feel like you can pretend to be this guy because you're doing it. Mm -hmm. You could not shoot a movie like this with you know trailers all around and being taking <coughs> breaks every two minutes to get warm, and it was pretty rough. Mm -hmm. But we had a. a we had a, a crew primarily of Canadians that are used to shooting in those conditions and they were very tough and, and it felt like we were on an expedition. So to put my mind, it put me in the mindset of doing this dog run with some abstraction, uh, the reality of what we were doing, how we were shooting it helped a great deal. Great. And what did Eric Sinclair bring in to the production? Many things. His, uh, Erickson Kaur uh, 
not only did he start out as a cinematographer, and he's often operating among uh, other cameras, there were usually multiple cameras, um, but he has a great love for animals, he has a great love for nature, and he deeply felt for the story. Uh, I, he pitched me the story even before I read the script, and it's almost like I didn't have to read the script because he told me the events that were happening, and I just knew his deep connection to the material. And through him, I wanted to know what he knew. <laughs> I wanted to inhabit what he wanted to express. And that's, that's a good place to be when you, you, when you feel that passion, when you feel that connection, when you feel that special information, and then you're going towards it. Tell us um, a little bit about the costuming that went in for this film. The incredible parkas created um, created that looked like real fur. Uh, Wendy Partridge was our costume designer, and she was just a genius with what she was able to make. Specifically, I mean, she did s so much research on the period and the different you know, types of people, what they would be wearing. And those fur coats in particular, I, you know, she had to create, they're all fake fur, so she had to create, because she didn't want each of them to look the same. They couldn't, so she created a fake, fake seal one, fake, I mean, I don't know what all the animals were, but basically she had to pull all these different um, faux furs to create ones that looked like real things. And so much so that, you know, you probably, I don't even know if you can see it in the movie, but for her it was important that the, the framing of the hood are two paws like this, that, and she showed us pictures of those, and so she has fake, you know, I don't know what kind of animal, paws. They, they were so beautiful, and the attention to detail, and um, it was so exciting the first time I put one on, and then she brought me into her workroom, because there were like nine ladies in there, like busting their fingers. They had to make a hundred of these, for Willem and I, and for background, and you know, a lot of it is hand-stitched. I just, I think she was, her care and passion and craft and artistry was just um, impeccable. Mm -hmm. So, how do you think uh, Disney Plus viewers are going to react to Togo? Uh, listen, it, it's difficult. You know, we're making a movie. It's on Disney Plus. God bless Disney for financing and making this movie. Um, so, uh, I think it's a good movie. So, uh, we hope we enjoy. It, uh, they enjoy it, uh, whether it's on, yeah. I would say also we've we've spoken to a number of people today and they had just gone to a screening and it was a range of people today. And every single one of them to me felt honestly deeply moved um, by the experience and that it was an enjoyable one. So that was, hopefully that will be the case with the Disney Plus viewers. And for me it was exciting to be able to watch a film with my family because my kids can never watch the work that I do. And we all, we all loved it. So it was, there's, there's something for everyone. It's, uh, I just want to say, you know, from our point of view, we're making a movie. We're happy it's being made. We're happy that Disney is supporting this movie, supporting Erickson Core to make this particular story. And we're happy uh, that it's at Disney because it'll get seen. But we're not thinking specifically. It's sort of after the fact that you think of it as a Disney movie. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? Big, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys!